What's up, Mavericks fans? Hey, big win last night to force a Game 5. When you're winning playoff games, it's never a bad thing. So, if you are a diehard Mavericks fan, if you're going to ride or die with this team until the very end and on to the next year until the end of time, spam MFFL down below, Mavs fan for life. If you're not typing MFFL, I guess you're not a true Mavericks fan for life. So get it going in the comments, trying to get 50 of you guys or more to spam MFFL. Let's get the comment section lit up. And uh, hey, before we preview game five, we got a juicy rumor to get into. So stay tuned. Coming up right now. You're watching Dallas Mavericks today. I am your host, Harrison Graham. Appreciate everybody for tuning in to today's show. And we're going to take a look at game number five, like we said, coming up later on in the video. So stay tuned. Some keys to victory to force a game six and come back home at the American Airlines Center. But there's some Kevin Durant trade buzz floating around the internet. So I was like, all right, I'll tie this into Mavericks today because that's what we do here. Reports out there that Durant has not spoken with the Nets brass since the reg or since the playoffs ended, which of course was an ugly sweep loss to the Boston Celtics back in the first round. So that's been almost a month. Uh, also, the reason that this could lead to some friction is apparently Brooklyn is not committing to Kyrie Irving long-term. They're non-committal. Like, they'd want to bring him back on a one- or two-year deal, but they don't want to commit long-term uh, due to uh, him not being available, regardless of if it's injury reasons, vaccination status, whatever. He's proven to be unreliable for the Nets. Therefore, Durant wanted Kyrie. He's his boy. If Irving's gone, Durant might want out of there. Here's Christian Winfield of the New York Daily News. Quote, if Irving leaves the Nets, it, would, it wouldn't be a surprise if Durant becomes frustrated with the organization's ability to put championship pieces around him. They failed to do so at the beginning of last season with none of their top offseason acquisitions, James Johnson, DeAndre Bembry, or Javon Carter, finishing the year in Brooklyn. Could Durant ask for a trade? Could this Nets, you know, dynasty attempt be over before it even really starts? I mean, the Harden thing already came and went. You traded for him last year. Uh, last year doesn't work out. This year he wants out, so you trade him. Kyrie hasn't been consistently available. You lost in the first round this year, got swept. Could Durant say, you know what, this attempt when I left the Warriors to start my own thing, this just didn't work out. My boy Kyrie Irving let me down for a variety of reasons. James Harden and him couldn't get along, and now it's just done. And we also put all our eggs in Steve Nash's basket. And hey, we love Nashy here at Mavericks today, but let's be honest, that was a big risk as well. I don't know, man. I think KD could be looking for an exit and maybe just maybe – the Dallas Mavericks would be interested. So what do you think? If Durant became available, would you try to trade for him? Type Y for yes, type in for no. Would you trade for Kevin Durant if he became available? I'm not the hugest fan of his personality, but man, if he became available, that would be interesting. Y for yes or in for no. Look, I said it a moment ago, I said it again. I'm not a huge fan of his. I think he's soft. I think him joining the Warriors was one of the lamest moves in sports history. But you know what? If he's available, of course you take a swing. This is maybe the best scorer from a pure bucket-getting standpoint that we have ever seen in the NBA. The guy averages like 30, 30 points every year, and he shoots over 50% consistently. He's going to shoot around 40% from three. He is an absolute bucket, and even though he's getting a little bit older, he's still really good. Uh, he's as good as he's ever been offensively, pretty good defender as well. How are you going to stop Luka Doncic and Kevin Durant? How? You're not going to. They're going to average 60 combined, and, you know, Durant, decent defender. Luka's still improving in that area. You just put three and D guys around them, Fiddy Smith, Bullock. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that would be a lot of fun. Again, full disclosure, not the biggest Durant guy. I'm simply saying if you could get him, you're telling me you wouldn't do it? I think you would. I think we all would. Subscribe now for non-stop Mavericks news and rumors all year long. As long as the playoffs are ongoing, we'll keep you guys up to date with that. But once the offseason gets here, we'll have you covered with that as well. So hit that sub button. Link is below, youtube.com slash MavsTV. We'll have you guys covered throughout the rest of the playoffs and on into the offseason. So then you start to think, okay, like, all right, let's just say Durant is available somehow. Okay, what are the tradable assets you got? Well, 
Tim Hardaway Jr., who'll have three years left on his deal. Spencer Dinwiddie, who's probably built his value since coming over to Dallas. Slow start to the playoffs, but he's picked it up and had a great regular season with the Mavs. Jalen Brunson, you could use as a sign-and-trade piece. That's probably your best asset. Maxi Kleba, Davis Bertans, Josh Green, a couple of firsts. I don't think really anyone else on the roster bring, offers much in a trade. I don't Dwight, you know, Dwight Powell is kind of a salary filler, but I don't think he has any real value. The reality is, looking at this, especially since your nearest first-round pick to trade is 25, unless you make a draft night trade, you can trade your pick on draft night this year, uh, but a trade of this magnitude on draft night seems unlikely. I, I just don't think you'd have enough ammo to pull this off. Kevin Durant could still get you get a team three or four first-round picks and a couple of pretty young assets. I mean, is Josh Green moving the needle? I doubt it. Dinwiddie's a nice piece. He's 29. Hardaway, he's approaching 30. I, you know, Brunson, I mean, I, that's a good piece. Like, as a sign and trade, think D'Lo back to the Warriors when the Nets signed Kevin Durant. It could be something similar. Like, if Brooklyn's like, hey, KD wants out of here, let's at least get Jalen Brunson out of the deal. Maybe something like that could be in store. So here's my trade idea. Kevin Durant to Dallas for Jalen Brunson, Tim Hardaway, Davis Bertans, two first-round picks. I think that's about as good as you can do. I, you know, I, I just don't see how much better you're going to be able to do than this, and it's quite frankly probably not enough. Let me know who you think wins the trade. I think Dallas wins it for sure, and I love Brunson, but if you can get Durant in here, you win this trade. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt. Type DAL for the Mavs. Type BKN for the Nets. Let me know who you guys think would win this trade. Now, BetUS is our sportsbook partner here at Dallas Mavericks today, and we got Game 5 betting odds for you guys to check out. But first, you got to create an account with BetUS. Go to chatsports.com slash MFFL, promo code MFFL to get 125% deposit bonus. You put down 100 bucks, they're going to give you 125 for free. Some extra cheddar to bet on during the NBA Finals. Game 5 betting odds as follows. Warriors are a touchdown favorite at home, seven-point favorite in game number five. Over-under set at 215.5. Uh, we'll see if Dallas can match the energy. They played three great quarters the other night. Uh, once again, though, not a complete game. They almost blew it in the fourth, uh, but uh, if they hit some threes, they'll have a chance. We'll see what happens. Chatsports.com slash MFFL. Promo code is MFFL. Let's preview Game 5 of the Western Conference Finals between the Dallas Mavericks and the Golden State Warriors. I'm Harrison Graham here from Mavericks Today. And uh, Dallas held off elimination in Game 3, or Game 4, I should say, to force a Game 5. Uh, listen, this was uh, a big win for the Dallas Mavericks. And now you head to Golden State for Game 5, where the Warriors are seven-point favorites. The over-under is set. Uh, for 215 point and a half points. Uh, this was Western Conference Game 4 final. Dallas 119, Golden State 109. After they fell down 3-0, they were able to steal this Game 4. I shouldn't say steal. You should have won at least one at home. Three great quarters. The three-point shooting was there. Uh, and something we've been talking about quite a bit in the series is they hadn't played a full game yet. They still haven't done that. Uh, three quarters, they were awesome. Fourth quarter, disaster. Got outscored 39-20 to and actually had to bring Luka back into the game despite going into the fourth with a 29-point lead. But nonetheless, 10-point victory, fairly drama-free, but got a little sticky there for a couple of minutes there in the fourth. But uh, nice to see Dallas not get swept. I think just mentally, even if the Mavs lose in five, it's important to – you know, win a game in this series and say, okay, you know, we didn't play our best, but, uh, you know, we at least took a game. So, all right, you know, we want to get back to game six. Let's get a little greedy. Here are some game five keys to victory. Number one, you got to keep chucking and you got to make them. I mean, you know, that's just going to be the playbook. You got to take a lot of threes. You got to make a lot of threes. 20 for 43 the other night. You probably need to hit 18 or more on 40 to 45 attempts. I mean, that's, that's what it's going to take. Uh, you know, they're getting good looks. They knocked them down last game. Can they in the next game? Hopefully. That would be nice. Uh, key two, play close to even on the boards. First three games got blasted on the boards. Absolutely crushed. One game four, that was big. Uh, I think they won it by four, 43-39, I think, something like that. If you're around even, that gives you a chance. Limit the offensive rebounds and second chance points. Number three, ball movement 
pace offensively. I thought they played quicker. They moved the ball around. At times they looked like the Warriors. They were cutting to the basket, getting some easy looks. That was opening up the three-point line as well. Uh, that was fun to see, and I think playing with some pace uh, to get some easy buckets is uh, something that can uh, can help you on the road. You know, you get that kind of rhythm, that flow going, try to take the crowd out of it. I think uh, especially early on that would be critical if Dallas is going to pull off an upset Game 5 win. All right, so there you go. There's some keys to victory to force a Game 6. Will it happen? Back your boys. Type Y for – or type 1 for yes, excuse me. Type 0 for no. Will the Mavs force a Game 6? Hope so. That would be very, very nice. To all the real ones who made it to the end of the video, we told you off the top, if you're a true Mavs fan, type MFFL down in the chat. Support the boys. You know, we'll see how things shake out. If they lose game five, it is what it is. It's been a hell of a season. But, hey, let's get greedy. Let's let's get back to game six. And uh, like Reggie Bullock said after game three, we're not losing again. That's, right. That's the mindset you got to have. That is the mindset you got to have. So spam MFFL down below and hit that subscribe button here on the channel because we'll continue to keep you guys informed uh, here on your Dallas Mavericks news, rumors, playoff stuff, everything else in between as well. So subscribe, and we'll see you soon here on Mavericks Today.